Hi, welcome to another Skylet from Emerald Hill Skies. My name's Doug, and today we're going to help you figure out how you can connect your laptop via a, an Android emulator inside of your Windows PC so that you can use Sky Safari and all of its uh, helpful information also to control your astro mount on which you have your telescope mounted. So let's get started. By the way, if you end up liking content like this, I hope you'll subscribe and click the thumbs up button and the heart and refer this to other people on social media, please. It does help the channel grow and helps other people find out information about this. Uh, that would be a great uh, gift back to us here at Emerald Hill Skies. So let's get started. Um, you know, the, the astro community is thankful to all the way these apps have helped us now to be able to see the sky in a whole new way. If you're familiar with Sky Safari, you know that it is an app on our phones or tablets. Uh, you can download uh, for $2.99 the Apollo Lunar Missions. You can, for $1.99, you can get the uh, HR diagram. For, uh, I don't know, $3, you can get 3 million galaxies added in. For $4.99, you get 90 million stars. We're talking about a fraction of the cost that you've used to spend on your telescope to be able to get all this great information. And uh, basically, you know as well as I do, uh, wherever you point in the sky, it helps you identify whatever object you're looking at. What's more, uh, you can have the same exact app now on your Windows laptop and be able to interface in the very same way with your telescope. So this is a great program. Sky Safari is very affordable compared to what we spend on telescopes, the fraction. Uh, to be able to connect it to Windows, you typically have to use a, uh, an Android type emulator and then purchase the Android version of Sky Safari, uh, install it via the regular Google Apps store inside the Android emulator on your PC. Now, this is not a program about installing the Android emulator. There are tons of helpful web pages about that. But we do recommend BlueStacks and it is free. The way we used to have to connect Sky Safari to this Android emulator and to our mount was using a little utility program that was free from Sequence Generator Pro and its uh, helpful programmers. It was just called Wi-Fi Scope. However, I think recently this is maybe, maybe it's because of some Windows updates, it's become for me a little less dependable. The connection will drop for reasons that I have no idea, uh, just inexplicably in the middle of a live stream, the connection with uh, Wi-Fi scope will drop. Not really helpful, and I'm thankful for those guys that program it, but it's not being maintained with deep respect. So I stumbled across another programmer, and he goes by the screen name Sin Fanatic, S-Y-N-F-I, Sin Fanatic, and he's creating this community, this, this thing called Alpaca Scope. Maybe it's a big community of programmers, I don't know, but the guy on Cloud Unites has become a friend of mine, and he kept saying, you should be able to use this to connect to Sky Safari. There's even this helpful webpage. I'll put this URL in the description so you can go read it. I tried to follow this, but I couldn't get it to work. And maybe it was because I also use another uh, kind of, it's not the most popular way to connect to a mount. Most people use EQMod, but I like this Green Swamp software. It gives you a graphical 3D model of where your mount is pointing. And for some reason, I'm just, nine months along in this hobby. But when I discovered this Green Swamp software, uh, it, it was just immediately, it was like I had come home again. And uh, it was very intuitive. But maybe because I was using this software, I don't know. Maybe because I was, I was using this software, it wasn't connecting well with Alpaca Scope. And that's when um, this fellow that's a friend of mine on Cloudy Nights, another friend, his name is Say. And he saw a video I produced a couple of weeks ago saying, yes, Wi-Fi scope is working and I, I love it, but I don't love it. I wish I could find another way. People have told me that we ought to be able to use Al Alpaca scope. Here's how I'm trying to connect it, but I can't get it to work. Say saw my dilemma. He wanted to use Sky Safari in his version of Windows. He took Alpaca scope to the Max, and because he's a computer programmer and because he wasn't using perhaps Green Swamp software, he quickly got it working and then contacted me and said, Doug, I'm willing to sit down with you and help you try to work this out. So over Zoom, I shared my screen and he walked through, it took us 15 minutes to 
try to figure this out. You do have to have ASCOM already installed on your PC, and I trust you probably already have that if you're already trying to control your mount. And you have to go one step further. Beyond ASCOM normal, you also have to install ASCOM remote. And here is that at the GitHub. It's an open source program as well. And I'll put this link in the description as well so you can do that. So once you get all these things uh, loaded, uh, well, let's just walk through it, okay? Uh, the first thing I'm gonna call up is uh, my Green Swamp server. Uh, and let's see, the mount is switched on. It's connected via USB. I should be able to error, connect error. to the mount. No, it doesn't like the apparently the COM port that I'm on. No, I huh. wonder if there's something wrong with the, um, hmm, maybe, oh uh, yeah. You know what they always say in astronomy, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> so I, I had unplugged the mount, so let's plug it back in. We'll turn it off and plug the mount back in. That shows you we are connected via USB and not Wi-Fi. Uh, so let's see now we can turn the mount on and then Green Swamp server should hopefully find it now. This long wait tells me it's still not connected well. So I'm gonna close Green Swamp server and reopen it. Maybe it detects those serial connections when it opens, so let's Assume that it does that and let's go back and look at those serial connections. We don't have any new serial connections. So What could possibly go wrong the first step if you have to have your mat connected? <laughs> so let's try this one more time and Maybe it's on three Ah, Here, here goes. West. So it is connecting and of course, it sets as the home position, the, the direction the telescope is pointing when you start um, Green Swamp Server. So now we're pointed at the North Star in the telescope's mind, in Green Swamp Server's mind. The next step, I guess, would be to open um, ASCOM Remote. So I'm gonna go down here and find ASCOM remote and open it the remote server and it says it started successfully now i just want to point out if you have trouble getting this to work you can explore whether or not your device is correct and you need to pick the right um, they use the word device but you know it's your right connection to your telescope i use ascom gs sky telescope but you might use one of these eq mod uh, connectors or a cpwi connector you know just whatever you're using Another thing that can go wrong, say, taught me, is here in the server connection tab, this dropdown under server IP address might be wrong as well. You could try localhost if you're using CPWI. You can, maybe it defaulted to the 127.0.0.1. That didn't work for me. Where did I get this number? I'll show you. Let's go find that. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel out of this and let's open up now Alpaca, Alpaca, scope and they've got this nice little uh, intuitive interface working this needs to be set on next star this i think needs to be set on eq north uh in any event you hit start alpaca scope services and it tries to find the mount and if it connects well to the mount it'll say ready to accept connections if it doesn't study the error codes because in my error codes i was seeing this ip address i just didn't know what to do with it and say help me figure out Okay, that IP address, 192.168.1.28, is the IP address we need to put into this server configuration tab. So when I put 192.168.1.28 into that IP address box, then uh, Alpaca Scope opened. And I, I think as best as I can understand, Alpaca Scope is like a bridge to connect uh, things like SkyFi. Uh, things like Sky Safari, via SkyFi, by the way, things like Sky Safari to your ASCOM services. It's like a interpreter program, I guess you could say, as best as I understand. So now we're ready to open up BlueStacks. And we'll just 
see, I have this set so that I click on a Sky Safari Pro button, but that's just because I told Bluestacks and they give you a different ad every day. Today it's these young ladies. Sometimes it's Vikings. Sometimes who knows what game they're trying to advertise. But either way, you're going to open up Sky Safari Pro inside of Bluestacks. And you need to go to settings the first time you open it up and make sure it's set on this scope type. It doesn't matter what kind of scope you have, you're always going to set it on this scope. Celestron Nexstar Advanced GT, that exact scope. You need to pick it out of this long uh, list. Celestron Nexstar Advanced GT needs to be the kind of scope, uh, needs to be the, the kind of scope that you pick. And mount type should always be Equatorial Go 2. Then make sure this is clicked Connect via Wi Fi and click the checkbox Auto Detect Sky Fi. And when you do, it will hopefully find what it thinks is Sky Fi via this same domain, same IP address 192.168.1.1.28. Port number, I think, will default to 4030, and you just leave that. If your uh, tilt device to slew is checked, you might not want that because you, that's designed so that when you move your phone, it slews the scope, and that's going to be weird. You probably don't want the scope slewing every time you pick up your phone. So uncheck that box, and then I think you're ready to X out of this. And notice there's a little scope tab here, and click Connect, and if all goes well, now Sky Safari is connected to the mount and it thinks it's pointing at Polaris. So you can use these little skew, con these little slew controls on the side to be able to control it. And depending on how your mount is set up, it will cause your mount to do whatever it thinks it's doing in that direction. Um, these little controls, as you know, if you've tried to use these things before, they won't always do the same thing based on uh, what direction your mount is oriented, but at least now you know you have control and you'll be able to use GoTo, for example, um, to be able to go back to places and things uh, that that you wanted to go to. Now notice also you can go to um, like Astro Planner and uh, other other such programs and you can connect still to your telescope there Tracking and on. go to, let me make sure that I do a sort for right now and let's just that's a 23 degrees so that's not very high but let's slew to that object slewing to coordinates so now astro planner is controlling the scope and if you get uh, sky safari in your uh, field of view your field of view indicator that's my telescope's field of view indicator it's showing where your mount is slewing to and what it's going to be looking at next whatever object you chose so uh, this is a great ensemble of programs to use. It enables you to have all of the information that's within Sky Safari, while at the same time it enables you to Swing be able to complete. still control with whatever uh, observatory program you use, like I'm using Astro Planner here. Uh, if you have pr trouble with this, let us know. Ask any questions you have in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like content like this and click that thumbs up, and we'll catch you in the next one. Uh, appreciate uh, you uh, being a part of this community and we'll look forward to seeing you next video. God bless.